Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. It's Drama Free Friday, don't you know? Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my creative space. Yeah, so just welcome. Hello, let's see, Petka and Carla and Bonnie. Great to see you guys today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always nice to have have friends to hang out with on a Friday, isn't it? Hello, Nancy. Hey, Stephen. Hi, Karen. Nancy, Dorothy, Anna. Good to see you guys. Cheshire Cat. I forgot your name. Cheshire Cat. Do I have it written down? I do not. If you want to tell me, I will write it down. I know I've asked you before, but I obviously did not write it down. <sighs> anyway. Um, let's see. Hi, Sylvia, Linda. Hi, Patty. Hi, Dana. Good to see you. Hi, Vicki. Hey, Joyce. Moon Rose Joyce. Nice to have you join us. Hi, Ina. Good to see you. Carlene. Nice to see you. Got out all the dress stickers. Good for you. <clears throat> oh, that's right. Your dog. Yeah. As soon as, you, as soon as I saw that, I remember you telling me that. <laughs> Thank you, Dar. Hi, Maureen. Um, <clears throat> did I, are you asking me if I had a nice lunch? I don't get to eat until late in the afternoon. <laughs> like, really late in the afternoon. <laughs> but thank you for asking. <laughs> Hi, Yvonne. <clears throat> uh, Kathy, nice to see you. Um, Stephen, tried the technique of painting uh, on fabric and it was kind of cool. Yeah, I saw your, are you talking about the, um, I'm not sure which painting you are because I paint on fabric a lot. Um, if you're talking about the one with the blocks and the stamping, if that's the one you're talking about, I saw yours. I, I saw your example that you used with the art foamies. I thought it was great. Fun. Hi, Pamela. Second time in the live chat. Thanks for thanks for taking a, a second. Uh, <laughs> thanks for trying us out a second time. Hi, Margaret. Uh, let's see. Keela, is it Keela? Just, just checking the chat. That's why I'm looking off away from the camera because I'm just looking at the chat for a minute. Because this is my one and only chance that I really get to interact with the chat for sure. <laughs> Hi, Signa. Hello, Linda McAllister. Gotta tease Linda. I don't know why, but I just have to. It's just like she makes me do it. She makes me do it. Hi, Barbara. Yeah. Okay, Stephen. Yeah, I looked at, I saw your video. I think I, I meant to, but maybe I didn't. I meant to leave you a comment. I thought it looked really neat. I liked it with the art foamies. The, the images aren't as clear and crisp as they are with the block printing, but I thought it was really neat. Uh, hi, Frederica. Hi, Hayes. Jessica. Hi, Tori. How many Lindas are here today? Usually quite a few. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Uh, yeah, Barb. Oh, you're welcome, Nancy. I'm glad you, I'm glad it made it to you. There's another Linda. So, so far I know we have at least three. Crap out of my shirt pockets. I picked up a cat today who obviously was not completely neat and tidy with himself, so hence I had to put on a second shirt today because I didn't have time to change. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have that, Nancy, but yeah, sorry about that, but we don't have that. It's a good idea, though. Might take it into... might. Uh, to be real honest, there's a limit to how many things, um, how many groups I can monitor and keep up with. <laughs> that might that might push me over the edge. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> Linda McAllister says she's the only real, the only real one. 
Hi, Lori. Hi, uh, happy Friday. You go by Re. Keila goes by Re. Did I have that written down? Let's see. Is it Re or Ray? I don't know if I have it written down. I gotta make me a new a new list. My list is sideways and upside down in both sides. You'll have to you'll have to tell me for sure. Um okay Nancy, I will go look. Uh, to tell you the truth, I have to tell you the truth. Facebook is like my last it's my last social media to go look at. And the reason is just because there's just so many other things that like go barf, 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 you know? So it's kind of like my last thing. I know it is, every, it's many people's favorite social media. It's, it's not mine, you know? So anyway, but I will, I will make a note, Nancy and I will go look there. So thanks for telling me that. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Sally Ann. Let's see, where else? Just trying to think. Chat's flying here, so I'm trying to catch up. Just take, if you're watching the recording and you don't want to listen to this part of it, just scroll through and fast forward. It's okay. It's okay. Jamie says she loved the Oxides video. Good. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, okay. Let's see if Keela answered me. Okay, if I miss if I miss something that you say in the chat, please put it in caps. All the letters in caps cuz that's my best shot at being able to see it. Um Yeah, yeah, it is. You're right, Barbara. You're right on both counts. I'll talk to the technical department about it and see what we can work out, but no guarantees on this go round. Um it's really easy, Nancy. It's very, very easy. It really is. Google it. There will be a, a, an easy way, I'm sure, that they'll explain to you. It's, it's very easy. You click the camera icon and attach your picture. And if you don't want to send them to on Twitter, if you don't want to do it publicly, you can always do it as a direct message. Both are very easy to do. Uh, let's see. Hi, Kim. All right, Barbara, I will think about that. Hi, Marion. Um, let's see. Just, just chatting here, watching the chat for a second. Okay, you can try and figure out. That's great, but I will look on the, the how to get creative, Facebook page. Mostly what I use Facebook for is to put information out there, not for interacting. So, yeah. Ke Keala. Oh, Hawaiian. Keala. Keala. Let me see where I put that. That's probably what I'm going to call you, if that's okay. I know I wrote it on here. We're going to... We're going to add a post-it note, because I now have lost my note. Okay. Okay, let me um, hang on just one minute. I just need to find this, because I missed, I lost it. Okay, okay. Ah, la. Okay. That's probably what I'm going to call you, is Keala. If you want me to call you something else, tell me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, hey, Braddy Patty. Good to see you. I love your name, Braddy Patty. All right, so uh, we've done all the, the, the uh, chit-chat for saying hello to everybody, so we're going to get started. So I'm Barb Owen <clears throat> of HowToGetCreative.com. I'm so glad that you're here on a Drama Free Friday. Uh oh, there's Claus Man Owen. Gotta be nice. Gotta be nice now. He's in the he's in the room. He's now monitoring the chat. Hi, Jillian. Um, so, anyway, it is Drama Free Friday, and why do we call it that? Um, I say this every week because we always have new people, but 
or I try to remember to say it every week. The reason is because there's just a lot of stuff going on everywhere. And there's always a lot of stuff going on around here, too. I need Drama Free Friday as much as you guys need it and everybody else needs it. So we just like to just set all the drama out away from the world and just pretend that it doesn't exist for the next couple of hours. And we just breathe and play and see what happens. So that's what we're going to do. So that's why it got the name Drama Free Friday. So we uh, leave all the drama outside the chat. We leave the drama outside the studio as to the very best of our abilities. And uh, once in a while it creeps in a little bit, but yeah, definitely we, we do our best to leave it out. So here is your word for the day, inspire. I hope each and every one of you are inspired. Ah, I'm having olive leaf mint tea. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. It is a tea from the company called Seagate, which is located in California. And they actually farm all of their, their own products. They have the olive leaf trees and they do this massive farm and fish operation for all their supplements. It's a really cool, it's a really cool operation. Anyway, you can buy the tea at most health food stores. I get nothing for saying this to you. I'm just telling you, I like it. I like it. Hey, Care, good to see you. Nice to see you. Okay. Well, Frederica says she's inspired to start her own blog and YouTube channel. That's cool. Good for you. That's great. It sounds like a horrible tea. It is wonderful. It tastes, it's just, it tastes like a mint tea. It is wonderful. If you don't like mint, you're not going to like it, but it is a delicious tea. Okay, so what's going on around here this week? Well, A, we had a holiday on Tuesday, and that means that I don't know what day it is for the entire week. <laughs> Do any of you have that problem? It's true. When we have a holiday in the week, if it's on the weekend, I'm okay. But if it's in the middle of the week, and this week it was on Tuesday, <clears throat> uh, you know, I didn't know what week, what day it was all week long. I'm still not sure. <laughs> I'm still not sure what day it is. Hey, Melissa, thanks for joining. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I think this is Friday. I mean, I had to check and double check several times to make sure. So earlier this week, I think it was yesterday, I posted a video called, um, yeah, Margaret, I do, she says she hates having two Mondays. Yeah, me too, because I can't figure out which one's the real one. <laughs> the, the 4th of July for me was Saturday, so the next day seemed like Sunday, and I'm like, that's not right, you know, it was, it's crazy sometimes. So anyway, I put up a YouTube video, and I do try to make those what is videos short, but I can't seem to manage it. So, yeah. Uh, so you'll just have to put up, <clears throat> put up with them being a little longer. <clears throat> no distress or oxides. Um, suggestions on homemade inks. Anna, I really don't, I, maybe somebody in the chat will be able to help you with that, but I really and truly don't know. Um, yeah, I really don't know about how you could reformulate, you know, do something to make the oxide. It's such an interesting fusion of dye and pigment ink. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. I just think it's magic, and so I really don't know. Um, so anyway, yeah, can't, can't help you with that one. But anyway, so I put that video up just showing a comparison of the colors that I have of the Distress inks, which are water-based ink, and the Distress oxides, which are also water-based, and a side-by-side -side comparison on the same surfaces. So you can go back and watch that if you want. Um, and my philosophy is, and I do this a lot in other people's YouTube videos, if it starts getting, you know, too wordy, which admittedly sometimes that happens with me, I just drag the little bar and just scroll across and yeah, it works. <laughs> 
So anyway, you can find out about um, my take on oxide inks. Lots of people are putting up videos about, you know, what they think about the oxide inks and how they use them, and so that was my take. Um, okay, um, let's see. I'm an enabler. Yes, yes. Are they ten dollars each? Uh, I, I'm assuming you're asking that that question about what I paid for them here, here, and I'm in the middle of the United States. They were about six dollars an ink pad, so that's what I paid for them. I'm sure you can get them from Amazon as well, and usually they're a little less expensive there. So, hey CB, nice to see you. So anyway, I did that. Um, and I also gave you a couple of ideas. I'll, I'll tell you why I use tags. Because I'm not a tag person as such. Like, that's never my go-to thing to, to sit down and make. If I'm going to sit down and make something, I'm usually going to do uh, small things. I'm going to do note cards because I send out a lot of note cards to people. And I like having my own things to send out to people. And um, so I'm never going to... Oh, I won't say never, that's a long time. <laughs> but I rarely sit down to just create tags for the sake of creating tags. And I know lots of people do that. It's just, you know, we all have our things. That's not one of mine. But I do like having a tag for sample purposes. And the reason I like it is that the space on the tag, because I use one, I, I cut my own. Um, they're usually like three by six or give or take. It's roughly that size. It's big enough that I can actually get enough um, product or experiment on the surface of that tag that I can remember and get to really see whatever it is, you know, that I'm trying to check out. So anyway, I gave you a couple of ideas for how I store the tags. One, I already have, you know, as a storage system. And then what I'm going to do to keep all of these oxide ink um, experiments together, I'm going to bind them into a little book. So, yeah. Hi, Deborah. Hey, Ruth. Good to see you. Um, so that's why I use the tags. So I don't use them as, you know, to make a pretty tag to send to people and that kind of stuff. I don't do that. Um, the other thing that I do use tags for is I will use make a bunch of them and then I'll use them in my journals and sometimes I'll use those for journaling purposes. You know, I'll pull it out and write the the um, my journaling on the back of the tag or whatever. Hi, Stardust Girl. Um, okay. Yeah, Melissa says she's not sure the purpose of tags. You know, I think. Hey, Sandy. Um, <laughs> Sandy seeing vandalism in her sleep. I bet you are. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. Different people have different uses for them. Uh, some people, I know they've done tag trades, you know, like ATC trades and that kinds of things. Uh, it's just a smaller surface to work on in a different shape. So, you know, anyway. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Mandela Madness is in full swing. Tomorrow is our second show and share session uh, at 2 Eastern. So check your email. Those of you in Mandela Madness, check your email. You'll get the link there. Uh, you still have time to join Mandela Madness if you want to. to get, if you want to get in on the live sessions, you need to be in the class during the time that um, that's going on. So, yeah. Um, okay, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, the link for Mandel Madness is in the description box below the video. Okay, uh, so I wanted to tell you one other thing. When we very first started How to Get Creative, I did a bunch of blog posts early on, of course. And um, one of our most popular blog posts, in case you've never done this, you might want to put in the Google uh, search bar, how to draw a mandala with a compass. You can type that in. You can do how to draw a mandala with a compass. You can do how to create a mandala with a compass, how to make a mandala with a compass. Any of those should bring up that blog post, and that's an easy way to find it. So you can 
type that in and that will take you to that blog post which is one of the very very early ones that we did and it's all stepped out in pictures and that is not um, I've not done that particular mandala in the course or anything any place else so anyway if you want to look at that you can see that and it's all stepped out so that's how to draw a mandala of the compass or any rendition like that okay um so i just wanted to make you aware of that so that's a little extra freebie kind of thing if you want to learn how to do that particular mandala um and i had a question this week actually hello sheila hey race um Oh, Jamie says that that's how she really originally found me. Oh, cool. Good. That's great. Um, so this week I was listening to one of my friends who was uh, streaming and she, somebody said something about drawing a mandala and her response was, why in the world would you ever want to draw a mandala when, or a mandala, or however you would like to pronounce it, um, when there are so many color books and design books out there where the images are already drawn for you and i thought that was a really good question and i thought you know that really made me think because um you know i thought you know i need to really have a good answer for that so i was thinking about it so some of you in the chat may have answers for this as well hey shu uh, but here here are the things that drawing mandalas for me does this is what the things, what the act of drawing a mandala does for me. One of the things it does is it instantly calms me down. As soon as I get out a piece of paper, and I usually start with a square, and I draw this, the, the first stroke of the mandala, I am instantly calmed down. So if I've had a really stressful day, it doesn't even have to be stressful, it just could be really busy, you know? And I start that process instantly. It's just like somebody just whew, takes me, you know, to a, it's like a smoother place, you know? Hey, Cookie. Good. I'm glad you're back. Um, but it just sort of lets, it's just like it's just, it's just a calming feeling. Uh, it also slows me down and it improves my handwriting. Now, I have to keep doing it. To, um, you know, it's like I can't let weeks go by without drawing mandalas. My, my handwriting will revert and go back to being sloppy again, which is not the best. It's not the best handwriting in the world anyway. But it really, I find that it really does improve my writing. And I think it just has to do with that slowing down and, and being deliberate, I think is what it does. And the other thing that it does, which is kind of funny, is that when I'm drawing a mandala, it's amazing the things, the solutions to uh, the ideas and the solutions to something I've been trying to work out. They just sort of float to the surface. You know, it's, I don't know, it's weird, but it does. So that that's another reason that I do consistently draw them. And uh, the other thing that it does that I really enjoy about drawing mandalas is it's not a thing you know it's not like I'm having to I'm not drawing I'm not trying to draw a cat that looks like chance you know I'm not trying to draw a tree that looks like the tree in my backyard I'm not trying to draw a specific flower that looks like something I like that too but drawing a mandala for me allows me to just draw something that ends up to be something but it doesn't have to be um, like an in a real life thing so Aunt Jessica says she makes paper snowflakes and and she gets the same benefit yeah it slows down your breathing yeah it sure does hey Packard I just saw your name scroll off the off the chat hey Zandra good to see you too hey Janet <laughs> Janet Janet fessed up she's the one that said that but you know what that was a really great question, Jan, and I was glad you asked it because it made me think. So I was really glad you asked it. And the other thing that I use the mandalas for very often is to experiment with color and shape. So, no, I was really glad you asked it. I was being, I'm serious. So, yeah. <laughs> and Linda says a mandala is stress for her. Okay, Linda, don't do it. 
Probably the biggest thing about mandalas is that, for me, they're fun. And I think with anything, you have to do what's fun. You know, if you don't like them, don't do it. If you don't, I mean, some people are phenomenal portrait artists, you know, and they can sit there and they can draw the most incredible portrait artists, or incredible portraits that look exactly like the person or animal or, you know, being that they're, you know, taking as inspiration. That is not me. That is not that is not fun for me. Hey, Krissa. Hey, Bunny. Um, that is not fun for me. I do it, but those things are not fun because I'm having to concentrate so much. So, you know, there you go. Um, another thing that's going on around here is season four classes at How to Get Creative are in full swing. So we got that going on. So it, let me just tell you, right around here, it's crazy. It's a little crazy. It's good crazy. So last week we did paste papers, right? Did any of you do paste papers? Marion says she went through a lot of eraser with her first mandala. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so did any of hi Vicky. Did any of you guys do uh, paste papers? I hope you did. So I'm gonna show you the ones now that these are all dry. These are from last week, so let's take a look at them, shall we? This was a scrap that I had. I think I sh might have showed this to you before. Um, you missed last week? Well, you can watch the recording if you want to. <laughs> Jessica did? Cool. So these are some of the dried papers. So those of you that were here last week, you might uh, recognize some of them. And what I do, like this was, this was copy paper. Some of these are cardstock, some are copy paper, some are um, scrapbook papers. So what I do when they're all done and absolutely bone dry, I put them on my ironing board. Yes, I have an ironing board. And I put parchment paper under and over them. And I have an old crappy iron that I use just for art purposes. And I iron them from the back. And that way it doesn't kill the metallic sheen. Sometimes the the heat will kill the, the metallic sheen. So, okay. I'm not going to belabor all of these. But that is how I control the warpage. And you can also spritz the back of the paper or the cardstock. You could spritz it on the back lightly with water to give it a little bit of steam. And, um, and then you can get that to help. Um, what paints did I do that one with? I could not tell you. I could not tell you now. Um, yeah, couldn't tell you. This was an ugly scrapbook paper. Okay. So this was a very ugly scrapbook paper. It had some pattern in the background. And, um, yeah, so that's, it's a great way to transform papers that you don't like. And here's another one. This was also a scrapbook paper. Some of these are going to look a little bit dull um, because of the reflection from the camera. You can see as I tip it around how much brighter it gets. So another ugly scrapbook paper. You can see some of the designs. Let's see if I can catch. If I tip it a lot, you can kind of see the background. Maybe not. So. Um, Steven put his through the laminator between parchment papers and it works like a press. That is a great idea. So if you have a heat laminator, put parchment paper around it and uh, run it through that. That is a great idea. So here's another one. This was also scrapbook paper, as was this one. And you can see, those of you that were here last week, remember how bad some of these were. <laughs> And by the time you get finished layering them up, how they transform. This was also scrapbook paper. Yeah, these are all scrapbook papers that I'm showing. Okay, so let me move these out of the way for the moment. Um, this one that you're seeing here, I'm going to move it over to the edge. This is a piece of 11 by 17 copy paper. 
And this particular one was started out as this lime green. And you can still see some of the green in the background because I didn't put too many layers of the paste paint on it, on this one. Sometimes I do a bunch. Mm -hmm. This one didn't have too many layers. This one is also um, 11 by 17 and this one started out as this neon orange. And right in here, I don't know if you can see and see a little break in the pattern and in here that's where the paper wrinkled and so that's what you call texture and this one this is a piece of Canson mixed media paper that I was cleaning off my brayer from when I was jelly plate printing this is one of my favorite ones this has some of the, um, I don't know if this has the glitter paint in it. We dropped glitter on some of these because Race Man challenged me. Don't think you can see it. But anyway, it has a little bit of sparkle in it. And one of my favorite things on here, see that? See that hand? Yeah. Love it when hands show up in, the, in what I do. There's another one. This was on yellow. Uh, text paper. Yeah, I did. I used glitter. Yeah, because he challenged me. This one I know. I dropped glitter onto it. You can see it sparkling in the light. As long as you do it when it's when the paste and the paint is wet, it will capture it and hold it. So you can see the glitter sparkling there. This was distressed glitter. Don't do it when it's dry. Do it when it's wet so it gets captured in that paste. This one also has glitter on it. He wanted me to do something, you know, like, and this was a scrapbook paper. You can see the stars in the background. Um, he wanted me to do a glitter cloud. And it's like, you're pushing your luck, boy. You are pushing your luck. <laughs> so the reason I'm taking the time to show these to you is because I want you to get some inspiration. Uh, tried the paste techniques on fabric. No, because I don't think it would work. Um, now, maybe it would, but I just don't think it would because I think it's going to soak in to the fabric too fast. But it might. I just, but no, I haven't tried it. This one you can see very clearly the stencil in the background. So the background on many of these started with a stencil, different stencils, and Dilutions inks. So you can see them here and there. I love what the Dilutions inks do underneath the paste paint. You would not think it would work. You'd think you'd lose all the pattern because they're so highly water reactive, but um, they really do. It really does work. And you can see more of it maybe. This one has got a lot of metallic on. If I tip it down, you can see the stencil back here. The one with the texture, how did I do the pattern? What color was it, Ruth? By the time I see it, um, by the time I see your, your question, I there's a lag, and so tell me what color it was. The one with texture. You'll have to tell me what color, because I don't know. Um, here is, this one was also ugly scrapbook paper. This had a bunch of Mickey Mouse figures on the back, in the background. Very busy. More scrapbook paper. The dots in the background, those are Dilutions inks. Oh, thanks, Krista. I'm glad you liked that video. Yes. Karen says um, she's amazed at how differently they look once they're dry. It's absolutely true. They dry um, really very differently than they look when they're wet. And that's one of the reasons that sometimes I come back to them and I think, did I do that one? Because I'll think that's the ugliest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And then I'll come back and look at it and go, where is that ugly one? And they change as they dry. This is one, this has words in all these stripes. This is um, 
scrapbook paper. So you can see down here where it didn't camouflage completely. But the rest of them, the rest of those words are pretty much gone. Or they've sunk below the surface. Hi, Aunt Becky. In this one, you really can see the, the uh, stencil. You can see more of the stencil over here. This is scrapbook paper, and this one, this has lines in it. It's like a ledger paper. And so you can see that. One of the reasons I did this is because of the edge. You can see the interesting edge around this. I think that'll be fun to use. The papers you did last week curled real bad. Yeah, they do curl. Yeah, you have to use an iron and flatten them out. Had the wrinkle line. Okay, let me go back and look. I don't know if I can tell you, Ruth, but I will see. This one. Okay, this one that had the, um, this is the one you're talking about. This one started out as orange, and then um, I think I put red, a layer of red on it, and I pulled the texture this way. You can see the lines kind of going a, kind of in an arc shape and let it dry. And after it was dry, then I went back over it with metallic paint, and then I used a texture tool that was um, it was one of the Martha Stewart tools. It was this one, the Martha Stewart tool. And I put it on here and I wiggled it as I went up. So what that did was revealed the orange and the red that were underneath. And then here I just wiped off spots. So that's how that one was done. Now where it got wrinkled, was that was just when it got wet and it just wrinkled. Yeah. Here's another one of the scrapbook papers. This one was really ugly, but again, had a really interesting um, edge, so it's going to be fun to play with. But I, I find that you do have to iron them, and um, I often spray the back, mist the back with some water, and that helps. This is another, this is exactly the same paper as this one. These two papers were identical, okay? Totally identical. But you can see how very differently they turned out depending on the paint and how many layers of paint and texture. And this one and this one. These two are the same. Again, scrapbook papers. These look similar because the colors I used are similar. But those shaped edges make will make for interesting uses later down the road. Okay, these were some I was just messing around with. This had something on the page, and so I scraped black gesso over. The, you can still see some of it back here. These were old patterns of mine. And so there's some interesting colorations, and, you know, I don't know if I'll ever use them, but you never know. They might turn into something. Yeah, ugly scrapbook papers are the best. Here you can see the the um, pattern lines. So some of these are pretty bad, but if, if you take if you take something that's pretty bad and you take out small sections of it, which I do all the time, um, it's amazing how the ugliest paper still works. So this is one of my favorite papers. I love the color. This is orange and purple and red with different patterns. I love this one. And this one started out on orange paper. I really like, you can go buy these colored papers at most copy places. I went to Office Depot and I bought these and I think they were six cents a sheet because I didn't want a whole ream of any color. And so that was how I got these. And I really love starting over the colored paper. Oh, thanks, Ruth. This one was on blue. Again, 11 by 17 from the copy store. 
This one turned out really interesting, yeah, an interesting thing, just because <clears throat> <clears throat> I dragged some of the, the colors into each other. So that was a fun one. Um, this one, this was not my best. This was on lime green. This was not my best one ever, but it's still got some usable stuff in it. Um, this one started out on blue. Barb, did I ever try to paste on wall paper scrap? Um, I have not used, I've used wallpaper paste to do paste paper instead of the art paste. Um, as far as like doing this technique on wallpaper, I have not. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking, but um, just taking a random guess. This is done on, again, on the Canson Mixed Media 98 pound paper. So this is, this paper is heavier. It also has a different texture because there was stuff under it. You can see these blocks of color. That's where I cleaned off the brayer. So it has a different texture. Yeah, liquid starch works. Um, I just happen to like the art paste. So it's so cheap. And so I use it, keep it mixed up. And, um go for it. And this one is again a piece of the Canson Mixed Media paper. Lots of different colors come through because of what was underneath. And um, lots of movement on that one. So that is the uh, Canson Mixed Media. Okay. <clears throat> so that is what we did last week. We did paste papers. And there are also two other sample video classes on paste paper that are on YouTube here. The links are not in the chat box or the video box, description box. I'll get it out in a minute. They're not in the video description box this week. They're in last week. So you can find the links, an easy way to go find those videos. Okay. So I have replenished my stash of... Um, Paste papers, which I love. Yeah, some of them really do make your eyes go like this, don't they? Kind of those optical illusion things. Okay, so let's play. Let's play. We're going to just play today. Sometimes when things are busy you just have to just play you know don't worry about what you're gonna do just play okay so what we have here is a big pad of um, newsprint okay so I'm gonna work on this in this angle hopefully so you guys can see what I'm doing getting making space I already am out of space I know hard to believe um, so this is just newsprint. This is, um, it happens to be from Strathmore, but you can get recycled newsprint from all kinds of places. Um, but that's what I'm using here. And then I just flip over the page and, you know, keep on going and just, it's just my kind of catch all. I have this newsprint in a much bigger pad as well. And when I remember it, I put it underneath what I'm doing. So that's what we're going to do here. So this is just to catch the overflow. Hi, skinny cat. Hello, Charity. So this is what we're using today. We're using white sticker paper. And this is, we've done some of this before, but what I used before um, was the shape the stickers were shaped what this is is the just the sheets of it's one whole sheet of sticker paper okay so this particular one comes with five sheets but it's the whole sheet okay it's not there's nothing there's no labels that have been cut out there's no shapes it's just the plain um, single sheet okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just play around this is one of the best things you can ever do to use up old stuff like old paint and old products you have laying around 
or to experiment with things that you wanted to learn. It's a great way to experiment with color combinations and so forth. There's one. Here's another piece. So these are two different ones I've done. Um, and then people always want to know what I do with this stuff. And by the way, one of the things that I've done with the paste papers is I've made, let me move this. I just happened to think that I was going to show you this. These are little file folders, miniature file folders that I did. We did these on stream a while back. So these are just miniature file folders that I created that fit in a plastic box. And this is where I store my stencils. Okay, so that is one of the things that I do have done with my um, paste papers among many dozens of other things. Back to this. So what do I do with all of these little paper things that I do? Sticker things is I use them to create cards. You can also use them on um, in art journals or ATCs or whatever else. Hey Jamie. Yep, and paste papers are great for collage. Absolutely great for books. So these are bits and pieces of the papers that I've created using the stickers, the sticker sheets and so forth. And these are different, like this one. Um, this one right here is just strips, horizontal strips. Well, I wish you were here too, Krissa. Yeah, that'd be fun. We could get in trouble. This one, I started with a piece in the middle. And then, like a log cabin, if any of you are quilters, this is like a log cabin. So I added a piece at the end, then I added a piece across the top, down the side, across, across. And so it's like building a log cabin. And I kept one side, this side right here, more to the, the green colors and this side more to the oranges and reds. And then this one, um, again, kind of based on a quilt block sort of thing. I started, let's see, where did I start? I think I started on the edge here. There's, a, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I started on the edge. That's what I did. I started on the edge and then I added this and then I added that and this and that and just kept building until it was filled. So what makes, could you do this with other papers? Absolutely. Why do it with the sticker thing? Because all you got to do is peel them off the sheet and stick them down. That's why. And they go down totally flat. Um, you're not having to mess with glue. You don't have any extra um, adhesive to worry about. So that's why. Hi, Jill. Good to see you. You started working from home? Good. Good to have you here. Okay, so that's kind of where we're headed. So let's play. Shall we? Let's play. Okay, so back to the um, pad of paper. And this is one of the full sheets of sticker paper. I have three sheets total. We won't do all, whoops, whoops. Sorry about the white, I forgot. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'll tell you what we're gonna do, what I normally do, and then I'm not going to do it because I don't wanna deal with the white. This camera doesn't, uh, it has an autofocus on it that I can't shut off, so we can't do the white. Um, what I normally do is use a palette knife plastic palette knife just like this and just some acrylic gesso and just randomly I mean it is random just randomly scrape some gesso around on it because the paint will take differently um, if it's on a gessoed surface or not gessoed surface and I like the interplay of the two things so what we're gonna do instead we're gonna go to step two <laughs> we're gonna pretend we put gesso on it we're gonna pretend and I'm just gonna pull out a stamp um, these are stamps I've had forever. 
and forever. And sometimes they're so old that they don't want to come off the sheets. So we're going to use this one. And these are just a kind of a background texture kind of thing. Let's do, there's a music one. So I'm going to pull this one off. So I've got these two, and maybe we'll do one more. We'll stamp all three of them. How's that? Maybe we'll do this one. Like Again, if I can get it off the sheet. These stick so incredibly tightly. And I would, I'm going to guess that I've never, or it's been a long time since I used this one because it doesn't want to come off. And if I rip the stamp, they're not expensive stamps, so I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be sad about it. Okay, we got it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some black ink. I'm just going to take some black ink, and I'm just going to use one stamp. Okay, and you can do this any way you want. This is a, this is a good place to play. Um, I'm not going to put these on a block because I don't care. All I'm after is some texture in the background. And give the camera something to not freak out over. Okay, so there's that one. And then to clean off the stamp, you just clean it off on your background paper. Okay, so we've got that one. So while I'm at it, I'm going to stamp these other two pieces of paper. And I'm using black just because um, it's what I have on my table. I also started out putting on gloves in a bottle on my hands. Um, so that the ink and the paint will come off more easily. It's a skin shielding lotion. It is not a barrier cream. So if you are concerned about stuff getting into your skin, you want to use um, a barrier cream as opposed to a skin shielding lotion. I'm not using any industrial strength products, so I'm more concerned about just getting it off my hands when I want to go um, out for coffee or to get a bite to eat or something. So the thing I'm more concerned about is getting it off my skin, not so much about it, see, see already, not so much about it penetrating into the skin. Um, is it Chipressa from Kosovo, Europe? Oh my goodness! I think you win. I think you win the prize. I don't think we've ever had a viewer from Kosovo. That's wonderful. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Melissa says she wears paint and ink like a badge. <laughs> it's about the truth, isn't it? Okay, so this is um, just a lacy kind of pattern. Glad you got to join us live. Thank you so much to each of you for being here. Spending part of your Friday. Unless you're down under. If you're down under, it's already Saturday there. One of the benefits of streaming is that I've had to learn. <laughs> I'm not very good at it yet. But I've had to learn kind of where uh, some of the time zones are. Listen. Listen. When it comes to daylight savings time and standard time and all that, never mind. Don't even talk to me about that. <laughs> That's why I say 2 Eastern and leave out the standard and the daylight. Okay, so there we go. So we're done with that for the moment. So we're going to put this away. That ought to make the camera happy because we now have some stuff on it. Okay. Yeah, Jamie says she does really well just to remember to put lotion on it all. I know. It's true. Okay, so those are done. All right, I need to get some baby wipes here.
to have at the ready because you never know when I might think to use one to clean off some of this excess stuff. Black tends to go everywhere, so it's a good idea to kind of try to control the black a little bit. Hey, Beth. Okay, so we've got the worst of it off. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the first sheet here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some paint on it. So now I don't know about you guys, but here's here is the thing with me. I will go back to the same colors over and over and over again. I don't mean to, but it happens. So I'm going to try. I'm going to make a concerted effort here not to do the same colors. However, I am working with Dina Wakeley's media line of paint. You could use any paint, okay? Um, so you can use any paint. So let me see what colors I used before so I don't repeat them exactly because if I'm not careful, I will do exactly that. Okay, let's use um, fuchsia because I haven't used that one. We'll use blackberry and we'll use because I've not used these before and then we're going to use um, sky okay because I have not used those three colors before no Linda I don't I don't I, I can do that all by myself <laughs> okay so here are the three colors I'm going to be using I don't have all of Dina's paints. I have um, the original colors and I have a couple of her second release of colors. She probably has a bunch more out by now. Um, I do like her paints. Um, that is, you know, I like them and uh, I like the colors. I like the way they work. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed that I didn't get the gesso down here, but hey, we're going to work with it. Okay, so here we go, and believe it or not, I'm going to paint with my fingers. You don't have to do this, but I am. So I'm just going to put some paint out and smear it around. You could do this with a card. I don't normally paint with my fingers, but I decided to challenge myself. and make myself do it. So when I was preparing for this, that was what I did and you know, I kind of liked it. So I'm like, all right, I can make myself do this on camera. And you want to have some, because this is gonna be cut up and because I kind of want to do one entire sheet that looks about the same, um, I'm trying to get some of the color all the way around the page and I'm also going with it being very 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 thin and a wispy okay so I'm gonna put that one away for now I'm gonna go to fuchsia finger painting is not my thing I gotta tell you it is not my thing well first of all this color right here this fuchsia this color um, I ended up with this color all over the carpet and I hadn't, I don't even know that I had used it yet, you know? Um, and I couldn't figure out how that happened. This one is just a super strong color. Uh, somehow it got on the floor. I mean, I just literally brought the tube home and I, it's not, doesn't have a split in it. I don't know what in the world I did. I must have opened it up to sample it or something, you know, to put a swatch somewhere and somehow it got on the floor somehow chance one of the sponsors one of my big fat Siamese cats somehow he managed to step in it and somehow it um, it wound up on the carpet I'm like you are kidding me yeah it is a very strong color so I'm using a damp baby wipe here and I'm just spreading it around now you got to watch that you don't get this paper too wet because this is not an art paper. This is an office supply. Okay, so I don't want to get this too wet. In fact, I'm going to stop. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep going. 
So that was fuchsia. Now I'm going to use some of the blackberry violet. Oh, thanks, Chris. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And the Nightbot messages that are showing up in the chat, don't anybody freak out. That's just an easy way for us to put links in um, so that we can give you links to make it easy for you guys. So don't worry about the bot, the Nightbot. He is our friend. He is our friend. Okay, so a little bit more of Blackberry Violet. And at this stage of the game, you want it to look pretty messy. Yes. And so we've achieved our goal. It is messy. And I have most of the white space covered, but I'm not, I don't care if every single bit is covered. Okay? Looking pretty good. So I'm going to put these three colors to the side because I'm done with those. And one of the reasons I'm going to put them to the side is I'm going to try not to repeat them. Okay? All right, cleaning off a little bit of the excess paint from my hands. And now I'm going to pull a metallic paint. So on this one, let's go with um, Penny, which is copper, or copper. So we'll go with Penny. I'm going to hit this with just a little bit of heat. If at any point they get too dark, you know, too, too, too much, I watched um, the Alice in Wonderland that uh, Johnny Depp was in. Watched it the other day, and ever since I've had the line, the too muchness is running around in my head. So if it gets to be too muchness, just pull out a little bit of white. And you can add a little bit of white. And you can always take a card or a scraper of some kind. And relieve some of the too muchness of the brilliant color. You can also paint, put the paint on the edge of the card the scraper. And drag some of that around. So we're not going to do much of that, just a little bit. Because I don't mind the variation of the color. In fact, I like the variation. Yeah, she does have metallic. She has several. She has um, Copper, which is penny, and gilt, which is gold, and sterling, I think, which is silver, and then she also has a rose gold, but I don't know the color name. Somebody in the chat might know it, and I don't know what else. It is an Avery sticker sheet. It just a, doesn't have any shapes. Okay, so I'm going to use some penny. And I'm going to add just a little bit of that. Here and there to get some metallic reflection. And at any time that you've gone too far and you go, oh, I lost the, the original color, you can always come back and add. some of the original color back on it. 
her gold I think is one of the prettiest golds. I really, really like it. So I'm just picking, just squeezing some out on my fingertips. Like so. You don't want to get a lot of water introduced into this process. That is one of the reasons I'm using a heavier body paint so that I don't have a lot of the water. Like, I would not come on top of this with washes of color to change it. Um, you might be able to do it with using acrylic glazing medium because that's not going to introduce a lot of water. But you might be able to do that. Okay, so we have this wild looking sheet of stuff going on, right? Hey, Travis. Yeah, the PBOs are nice. The Dyna colors are absolutely very nice from um, the PBO company or PBO or however they like to pronounce it. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off some of this and then just to give this one a chance to completely dry, we're going to switch sheets so let's go to this one for this one and let's pick out some different colors let's see if I can manage to do something different than I've done before how about um, lime green yellow all right let's live dangerously and throw some ruby into it yep green and red could be trouble that's all right we're gonna work with it we're going to work with it. Hi, Tam. We're going to work with it. Okay, we're going to put the red down first. This is Ruby. It is a very strong, strong pigment. So... What we're going to do is I'm going to go right for the scraper okay I'm going to grab a hold of the paper and I'm just going to start scraping I'm holding the paper just so um, it doesn't want to pick up and travel around. Okay, and you see I have paint on here. The whole thing's going to go red, but you know, hey, we're going with it. It is strong and it travels a long way. Okay, before I add anything else, we're going to dry this. Makes your eyes twitch. <laughs> they are strong colors. Highly pigmented. Doesn't have to be bone dry, but I just want to get it dry enough. It is, and I think her line of paints, I think they are incredible colors. You know, it almost has a, a pink undertone behind it. Beautiful stuff. Okay, let's put some yellow here and there. We'll shoot for the spaces that didn't have paint. And again, I'm going to scrape it just for the sake of time rather than finger painting. We may do some finger painting here in a minute, but... Let's see, all that paint. And I didn't put out very much paint, so there you go. Yeah, they, and I didn't even enable you, Travis. You did that all by yourself. <laughs> Travis accused me of enabling him this week with the distress oxides. 
I'm not the only one. Okay. Get rid of the paints. Smash it out flat on my underpaper so it doesn't take forever to dry. Okay, so there we've got some red and some yellow. And then I am going to um, take some white gesso. You could use white paint. I'm going to use gesso because I can get a hold of it with my um, palette knife. So just a little bit. And put a little bit of gesso in here. This kind of, when you're doing stuff like this, you have to think in terms of just playing with the colors and playing with whatever the product is. You can't look at it as this beautiful thing that you're trying to make, because um, it's not going to be a thing. It's going to be cut up, okay? All right, so we've got a little bit of white added. And now we're going to see what happens when we put lime green on top of it. Parts of it should go kind of brownish. As it mixes with the red, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's add some. Because the red and the green should neutralize each other a little bit, although the red was pretty dry underneath. And if you want to leave um, more thick areas of color, you certainly could do that. You could put the paste paint on top of this, but you're going to get the paste is so wet when you add the paste, the art paste and the um, paint together, it's so wet that I don't know how it would react. But hey, if you want to try it, you certainly can do this. Do that. Okay, so we have some green added. Actually, that doesn't look bad. Okay. Okay. So, we're going to put those away. And clean my hands again a little bit. Okay, let's put a little bit of metallic on this one. We used copper. Is that what we used? Yeah, we used penny, which is their copper. On the last one... My birthday is in July. It is. And so we're going to use this one, which is gilt. This is the gold. The other one we used was the penny. I don't know why not, Dorothy. I try. I mean, my, my attitude is always give it a try, you know? It's always my attitude. So I don't know if you're going to be able, can you see the reflection of that gold? Reflective things like golds and silvers and coppers are so hard to show on the screen. It's the 18th. I really don't pay much attention to birthdays. Um, I was born on one of my sister's birthdays, and so I never really had my own birthday, so, you know, it's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Some people make it a, a an occasion, you know. For me, it's like, it's just another day. It's just another day. 
like, get over it and move on. Okay, so we've got some gold on here. So I'm going to see, I'm just trying to catch the light so you can see some of the, the reflective quality. And put the lid back on this it's just as soon as I can figure out where it went. Here it is. These um, tips that you can get to go on these tubes, it depends on how thick the paint is as to how well those work. I'm not fond of them, to tell you the truth. So, yeah. If I were to do this again, I would not buy those tips. But that's just me. I'm not saying that to be negative. I'm just saying that we all find things we like and things we don't like. That is just not my preference. Okay? So. <clears throat> Hi, Nanette. Nice to see you. All right. So here we go with that. Maybe I should pick a clean page so maybe you've got a shot at seeing what I'm doing. Huh? Okay. So we're going to a clean piece of paper. So I'll give you a little better look. All right, let's go back to this one. So you can see that we do have um, a difference in colors happening. So this is good. I haven't repeated the same thing. That's good. So what I'm going to do now is, first of all, I'm going to have to hold it because it wants to curl up on me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some stamping. So I'm going to, I have some stamps here. So these are just some different stamps I pulled out. I also have my, some of my face stamps, which are down to their very, very final quantities. The link for those is in the description box. Um, so I'm going to take one of my images and I'm going to stamp her around. here and there, on and off the page. I don't even care whether you see the entire face. Mostly what I'm using this for is just black, adding something black to the um, page. And make sure you get the edges as well. Okay, so we've got that. What I do to use these, it, because these come just as a sheet of red rubber, um, I put fun foam on the back to cushion them and then I use just a little hinge made of painter's tape as a handle to get a hold of them. That, I started doing that ages ago and uh, I like that so there you go alright so let's use another one let's do um, this spiral just because I love it okay so this is a spiral this is an old Stampin Up stamp from somewhere I bought it at a garage sale I mean I know it's from Stampin Up but it's from a garage sale I don't care if I'm stamping over what's already there. Do twist and turn your stamps around just so they are different. You could of course use different colors of ink. I am using archival ink because I want it to dry. So I am using archival ink. And I also want it to be permanent. You could use stays on. Um, Okay, and that's that. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and then we're going to use the other one. This is the one that has the copper paint on it. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. Pull this one back. This one, since I just did it, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun.
But if you use those super thin layers of paint, um, it's amazing how little um, it takes to dry. You know, little effort it takes to dry them. Okay, let's do, let's use this one because this will be quite different from the other one. This is also a Stampin' Up, an old Stampin' Up stamp. The goal is, when you're doing stuff like this, if you want to build a stash of supplies that you've created for yourself, your goal is, in my opinion, is to make them different from each other. Okay, so we'll put that one aside, and then I'm going to use this star stamp. It's kind of a, whoops, sorry, scribbly star. Again, an old Stampin' Up! stamp. Because when you cut it up, you want to have some of everything around the page. Again, letting things hang off the edges. Okay, good enough. So that's what we have on this one. Okay, so far so good. The crazier it gets, the busier and crazier it gets, the more I like it. So I'm going to put the ink pad away. And what I'm going to do now is hit it with a heat gun. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Miss Ellie. And thanks, everyone, for taking part of your Friday to come spend here. It's great to have you. Okay, now remember I still have this other sheet over here with music stuff stamped on it, but we're not going to do that today. Okay, so let's go back to this one, and I'm going to use, I'm going to grab a stencil, get the white out of there. I surely have some stencils out here on my desk. I know I do because I had, I set some out earlier. Okay, we have this one, which is a Diane Reevely stencil. And if my head gets in the way, I apologize. Just digging for a minute. And these are some of Pabla's stencil. Pabla is in the chat periodically. I don't know if she's here today. Um, but these are designs that she cut and sent to me. And she taunted me by sending me a, uh, a craft knife, a stencil of a craft knife. There's a story behind that. <laughs> but these are designs that she did. She, she believe it or not, started out cutting all these designs um, with a knife and then she got a cutting machine so she started doing them with the cutting machine I believe um, but she does wonderful wonderful stencils and she does love some of the Celtic knot work that she has cut into stencils and stuff unbelievable yeah unbelievable okay so we need to pick a color that is in big contrast to this so let's go with um, I'm gonna stick with the Dina paints 
I'm going to go with evergreen. Um, I, I don't know what machine she used, but it was an electronic cutter that she did them on. I do know that, but I don't know which machine she had. Okay, so this is evergreen. It is a beautiful green color. Yeah, it's a beautiful green. It's kind of a, it's almost, a, I would say, kind of a muted green. It's like a muted grass green. It's like grass green with uh, white in it is what it looks like to me. I have no idea what it really is. Okay, so we're going to put this on here. And let's take um, some of Pablo's stencils. And we're just going to stencil on here. I'm going to use a a uh, makeup sponge and I am going to get a hold of some of the paint see if I can get this here where you can see it and stamp it off so that I don't have much paint at all on my sponge So we're going to just go with that. Okay, so far so you can see that. So all we want is just a hint of stenciling here and there. And I know my hand gets in the way periodically when I'm working with this particular camera. However, we'll just make it work. Okay, so you can see what we're doing. So every layer that goes on this makes it more complex and deeper. And so I'm just going to keep going and going. On this one, this is the only stencil I'm going to use. And I don't know exactly what stencil material she's using, if it's plastic folder material or quite what she's using, but it's pretty sturdy stuff. But you really want that paint to be pretty dry so that it, if you want it to maintain its integrity, <clears throat> then you've got to um, uh, <clears throat> work with the work with your sponge not having very much paint on it. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit more here. And we'll come over this side and we'll add a little bit over here. Sandra in the chat has lots <clears throat> lots of cutting machines. She has lots of familiar she's very familiar and has lots of experience with cutting machines. So if you have a cutting machine question, she probably has the machine and can probably help answer those questions. I do not have an electronic cutter. I have a manual cutter. I have a Sizzix big kick. So I'm not familiar with the electronic stuff. I mean, I understand the concept, but you know, it's not my, not something I have in my studio. Now these have, the stencil has some pretty fine little areas in it. You see how very fine these little bits are so I will soak this to clean it rather than use a baby wipe because those are just way too uh, delicate okay so we have some stenciling on this getting more hot messy by the minute that's what we're after all right let's go back to this one 
And um, let's do, I have another stencil here with words on it. This is a Dina Wakely. Bye, Di, good to see you. This is a Dina Wakely stencil. Um, I'm see if I can tell you what it is. It is <clears throat> affirmations. You can't see that. Looking for my zoom. Looking for my zoomer here. I don't know what I did with it. Well, anyway, it's called affirmations. That's the name of this stencil. So that's what we're using. Okay. And I'm going to use um, a different color. Let's see what color shall we use. I don't know if I got one out or not. I thought I did. I'm losing my mind, people. I'm losing my mind. Okay, we're going to get another one because I lost the, the other one. Oh, here. We're going to use umber. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> so this is umber. And I'm going to switch to a different sponge. Load it up exactly the way I did before, and then I'm just going to start randomly stenciling bits and pieces. And if things get smeared a little bit, they just do. Okay, so just go and go and go until you have some stenciling on it. It just helps to break up some of, it just adds interest to the rest of this business, okay? Now you can see down here it's getting thicker. That's because I'm not being very careful. I'm going to switch to a different part of the stencil. Keep your sponge as dry as possible. You still have to have paint, enough paint that it'll go through the stencil, but you want it dry enough that it um, hopefully doesn't go squirting under the stencil. To clean your stencils, if you put them in a sink of hot water, I start with hot water with a whole bunch of uh, Murphy oil soap. It will clean the stencils. I have really good luck with that. And just let it soak for a long time and yeah. Okay, so that's enough. That's enough of that. Enough stencilage. Okay, so we just have some stenciling on top of it. On this, you don't have to stop. This this is not one of those where you have to know to stop because you're going to cut it up in such small pieces that it doesn't matter. So this one you can just keep going and that's fun. Okay, so we're going to go back to this one again and I'm going to hit it with a heat gun a little bit. Okay, now this is where you can really affect 
the way that this looks and that's with adding skinny lines to it and if you choose to add white skinny lines it will get one look if you choose to add other colors it will get a completely different look so we're going to come down here and just to give you an example I'm not going to do all of this because it would be here all day this is a Signo Uniball pen which writes on about everything and because I'm not a Celtic knot expert um, I don't know exactly what things go under and over and so forth. But do you see how all of a sudden that changes the look, right? It will change the look of that completely by adding the line work. So this is white and again it's not neat and tidy. I'm not taking my time and being all, all careful about it. But by adding the white you can change how things look quite a lot. We'll add a different color here in a second just so you have something to compare it to. And I actually when I'm doing this I don't try to be too careful and if the pin skips a little bit, I'm okay with that. And if I don't get every single line, that's that's okay too. But you see how it just what a difference that that makes in popping those patterns out. Okay, that's with this Signo. I'm using the Signo Uniball Broad pen in white. So let's say that we want to use a different color. Um, these are the Moonlight Jelly Roll pens. So let's get out, we'll do this blue pen, or maybe purple. Got purple. We'll do purple. And you could spend a very long time doing doing this part of the process. But the Moonlight Jelly Roll pen will show up on these surfaces. Um, they will, first of all, they write on about everything. But they will show up on dark surfaces and it's kind of hard sometimes to get things to write uh, over metallic and um, I find that these these pins write on the metallic quite quite well so okay let's I'll just finish out this little pattern here and the longer I go the sloppier I get we don't want Pablo to see this. She would not like what I'm doing to adulterate her beautiful stencil. As I said, you can be very meticulous or not. You can also pick up the stamps, you know, the stamped images and so forth. So you can see the faster I went the sloppier I was getting but what a difference between the purple and the white. So you could do both, right? Okay, one of the other things I like to do with these is to use these um, fine liner bottles filled with acrylic paint. So I have, this is, these are golden fluid acrylics. This is cobalt teal. This is the last of my cobalt teal. This is manganese blue hue this is white Createx um, airbrush paint and this is black Createx airbrush paint and all of them have some water added to them alright so let's do um, let's do this 
Yeah, let's do this one. This is the cobalt teal. And I'm just going to squirt some out on my sheet there. And then you can just decide, you know, some kind of random pattern you want to do. So let's just do big old sloppy flowers. And you can stop at any point that you want to with any of this. One of my favorite things to do is a big humongous spiral. But you can draw with the acrylic paint so easily with these little uh, fine line bottles. And if you go, if you make the lines thin enough, it will, um, they'll dry pretty quickly. Then I always wipe off the tip and then they have a needle, a needle in the cap. And so I always put, make sure that goes in the tube. That helps keep them from clogging. It's not a foolproof way of keeping them from clogging, but it really helps. Okay, let's go back to this one just for a second. And on this one... Um, I'm going to use some white. I'm going to see how my white's working today. You bet. Thanks for being here. I had a hard time with this white paint. It was not working for me earlier. Looks like it's going to. Okay. So I'm just going to add some lines. Just do a checkerboard sort of thing. To kind of, you know, do something with those black diamond things in the background. The less you think about this, the better, the better your result's going to be. Okay, so we've got some white paint on it. Again, I wiped off the tip. I'm going to put the needle back in there. And another thing I found that helps is if you bang the bottle on the table, that kind of gets all that paint falling out of the tip. So sometimes that helps. Another fun thing to do with these is, this is the manganese blue. So let's see how this one's going to work, because I just mixed this one up, so. Yeah, okay. So one of the things that's fun to do with this is from high above, let it drip. Now these drips will take a while to dry. And I would not recommend you do this in red because it will look like drops of blood on what you're doing. Unless that's the look you're going for. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm not squeezing at all on my um, bottle. Okay, I'm just letting gravity let it drip out. When I get enough, and if you get too much, it will splat. If it splats, it's a whole different look, right? And then this one, because it's going to take a while to dry, you need to put it someplace where it's flat and let it completely dry if you work with the, the drops like that. So I'm just going to set that away from me so I don't put my hand in it, I hope. And then let's go back to this one for a minute. I'm going to dry this with a heat gun so you can see what it looks like at the moment.
I'm just trying to get some of these to set. Some of the lines, because again, it's going to take a little bit for that to get completely dry. But what I want to show you about is um, splatting. Because some people like splats and some people don't. So we're going to use um, we're going to use the lime green. Okay, so this is lime. Okay, so this is lime. And you can do this stuff in whatever order you want to do it in. Splats are usually the, about the last thing I do. So I'm going to get some lime out. Not a lot. Doesn't take much. At this point, you really want to cover your work surface. Because <laughs> if you don't, splats tend to go everywhere. All right, you need a brush of some kind. I'm using a fan brush. And I'm going to put some water in a little container here. Just a tiny little bit of water. And the, and you don't have to use the fan brush. It just happens to be what I like. So I'm going to add plenty of water to this. Because it needs to be super soupy. How do you like that? Super soupy. I didn't get quite enough paint. A little bit more. It needs to be quite thin. Okay. Now, this is where we live dangerously, folks. So, you can splat in a couple of different ways. You can either take your brush filled with soupy paint, and you really don't want the glob of paint to come off your brush. That comes from not mixing it well enough. Okay, so you can tap it against your finger. Or, if you're really living dangerously, you can take the brush and you can sling it, and you'll get bigger. Splats. Whoops. And if you go like that, you get a really big super one. And again, I splatted a big hunk of paint, so we'll just take that off. Okay, and this one I'm going to just um, dab and let some of it stay there. Alright, so you can see the splatters on there. That really shows up with that lime green. Okay, enough. Stop. You got to spot. You got to stop. Got to stop. This is going to take some time again for this to dry, um, but it's fun to do that. And so everything that you put on there, if you get a layer that you don't like, add something else to the top of it. Okay, And when you're finished with it, it should look like a bunch of craziness. Like, what would you ever in your wildest dreams do with that, right? So here are the, a couple of other examples. done in different colors. Okay. Yeah, the lime splats look good. All right, so there's a couple of other examples. All right, at this point I'm going to move all this stuff off the table and we'll play with um, making a card. Okay? Just so you can see the full process beginning to end. So I'm going to put one of the cards up here on the table so you have something to look at. And I need to um, get rid of the painty water and stuff, so give me just a second.
So let's do a card. So what I have is a piece of white cardstock cut out, cut down, I should say, and I've cut it down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. Okay, so that's the size that I cut it to. And I have pre-cut a whole bunch of strips So I have a whole bunch of strips already cut. And so we're going to do this one at an angle just for fun. Jamie loves Happy Mail. Oh no. You do good Happy Mail too. So I'm just going to cut, making sure that I have enough across the end. So I'm just going to peel this apart. And then I'm just going to start. And I'm not going to be picky about this. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim off these edges. Now, if you had a journal page handy, I know you can't see what I'm doing, but i got to have it here where I can see it. If you had a journal page handy, you could stick these little bits and pieces into that. But I don't, so there you go. Alright, so we now have our first strip ready to go. So now I'm just going to pick out um, what I want to do next. And this is why you want contrasting colors, because they look nicer, I think, if they're in contrasting colors. And I'm just going to cut them. And I try to butt them up to each other side by side. I'm trying not to overlap them. Um, if I get a gap in here where, you know, because they're very sticky. So if you get a gap, then I just grab one of my gel pens and I just put that little tip of that gel pen right down in that crack and color it. And if you have a... Um, bone folder. I like the Teflon bone folders, personally. I turn it over and burnish it, and that way it's stuck to the back. Now you can trim as you go, or you can wait until they're all done, and then you can trim all the edges up at the end. Just kind of depends on how you like to work. Thank you, Krista. Same to you. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so we'll put this one up here just because we can. Sometimes the biggest challenge to the whole process is uh, getting the backing off. And I'll tell you, once it goes down, you might as well stick it all the way down because it's not coming up unless you use some kind of product like Undo or something that uh, would allow you to remove it. These would also make really good borders in um, journal pages or other kinds of things that you like to have borders on. 
or scrapbook pages. If you're a scrapbooker, you could use them on a scrapbook page. I like the different widths of the um, strips, just because I like that. You could also, if you were so inclined, you could take your um, ink pads and you could ink down both sides of every strip, and that would give you a different look. And sometimes I save the little pieces. <clears throat> if they're big enough, I'll save them because um, you never know when you need a little space, you know, a little bitty space to fill in. Like this is a tiny little space. And so let's see, will this fit? No, of course not. I want to see if I have another one. No, of course not. Okay, that one will fit, so we're going to use that one up. Even though it's similar in color to the one it's right beside, it's okay. If you have non-stick scissors, which these are not, that is a gr this is a great time to use them. Okay, so you see how quickly you can cover this card base? Yeah. So I'm going to turn this around. And let's just pick up another random strip here. It's too much the same size. So this is where you can get way too picky, Barb. You can get too picky here. Okay, I like this, but it's too much the same size. So what I'm going to do is just cut it. So I'm just going to cut it down. So once you painted up a bunch of these sheets, then you just have fun figuring out ways to use them. And as I've said many times, I like having, I'm not opposed to buying lots of stuff, um, but I really enjoy having my own things to use. So I know my hand's in the way, sorry, but got to line it up here. Because I like having things that are my own, you know, that are like, I like doing things that I can't even repeat, to tell you the truth. Which is probably another reason that I really like mandalas. Because I'll tell you what, one of my nightmares was, when I was recording everything for Mandala Madness, was trying to have, have, image, have uh, various things done in the step outs so that I could have one done and then pick up another one and all that. That was quite a challenge because I was trying to make the same thing more than once. I was like, this is really hard. I know. Don't you feel sorry for me? <laughs> Not. I don't blame you. I wouldn't feel sorry for me either. Okay. And you really need to work on a nonstick mat when you're doing this. If you're working on that scrap paper like I was working on earlier, the drop paper, you're going to make yourself crazy. Because it will stick like mad. Okay, so you see where we are so far? All right, let's put this one on here like so.
and burnish them down. And we have one more little corner up here. Okay, so we got one more little corner, so we want something See this little stamp right here? This is one of my favorite stamps. It has these three little happy girls. And it even says, on the bottom it says, happy, happy, happy. I think that's the cutest little stamp. Except it won't fit there. But I think it's really cute. Okay, so we're going to just put this on here. Even though we're probably going to waste part of it. Hang on, let me... Salvage a little bit of it. And so we are done. See, that didn't take too long, did it? So I'm just going to give it a good burnish from the back using the bone folder like that and get all this other stuff out of my way just like that. Clear the, clear the decks. And now I use these pre-made card bases from, because it's what I have access to locally. So these are Simply Solids um, card bases, and I love these. And so we're just going to pick one out, because they come in colors. And they come with the envelopes. They're pre-done. I don't have to do a thing. They're already done. Now, I do ink around the edges. I do, Linda. I don't think I do. Do I? <laughs> so I'm just going to use my ink pad and I'm just going to ink around the edge. It just gives it a little bit of definition. This is the archival ink. I'm going to do the same thing around the card base. Again, just because it gives it a little bit of definition. Now, it takes a little bit for that ink to dry, so to eliminate the issue, I just use a rag and I just go around the edge. And that way I wipe off the ink. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the card base. And that way I get rid of the excess ink just like that. Okay, so it's going to go on here like this. Okay, and then I use, um, you can use whatever method you want to put those two things together. I'm going to use this ATG gun. This is actually from the picture framing industry. The tape comes in different widths, but it sure is easy. For things that aren't too thick, this works really well. So then you look at it and you decide which way do you want it to go. Maybe we'll have it go this way, you know, make it a, a card that opens. And this is always the worst part for me, i got to tell you. If you ever get a card for me and it's straight on the base, it's a total accident. Total accident. Okay, close enough. Close enough for government work, as they say. And then because I just have to, I look for words in here. So I look for a word <clears throat> or phrase, and this is in the big chat, the Tim Holtz big chat.
Okay, so, and I don't second guess myself on this. I just pick out whatever jumps out at me. And these are, um, the white is on the back. And so I use a marker of some kind. This is a um, Copic marker. And I go around the edge. Keep the bulk of the marker pointed down away from the right side. That way if you slip, it will slip and mark on the back, not on the front. And all that does is remove that white edge, which I particularly don't like, so there you go. Okay. So this is our card. I'm going to let it go this direction, and then I just pick a spot where I want to put the words, and I use a little glue to reinforce it. And I generally put it in one of the corners just because I like it that way. But I always add some glue. This is Aline's tacky glue that I'm adding to it, and that just reinforces the adhesive. Okay, and that, that's what we did. And then you want to sign and date it, because if you've done this, You've done the whole thing, right? So sign and date it. Of course. So there is our car. So there's that one. This one is the one that I created that looks kind of like a log cabin quilt block. So I started with the red in the middle and then went across the end, the top, the end, the top, and just rotate it all the way around. So that's how I did that. I kept one side kind of in the greenish tones and the other side in more of the warm tones. So there's that one. This is another one, Explore Everything. Oh, that's very sweet, Judy. She says she wants to spend a week with me as a student. I'd love to have you do that. So these are all going horizontally. Okay. And this one Again, inspired by a quilt, sort of a quilt block type thing. I started on this edge over here and I put a strip down the side and a strip across the bottom. And then I went back, side, bottom, side, bottom, side, bottom, side, bottom, side, side. And that was that. Okay. So there you go. So that's how you can take sticker sheets, do your own artwork on them, such as these two, or one of the ones we did today was this one. You can see now how much the blue dots have dried down. They're changing color. And I probably will come back and do a little bit more on this one. I don't know. I may cut a strip off and see what it looks like, or I may do some more. I, I have to be really careful that I don't make them all look the same. And then I'll get the other one to show you. because we all tend to develop things that we like and we tend to repeat them over and over. So here's the other one with the splats on it. So you really want, I think, you want to do these so that the colors are very um, different from each other. So that's what I was trying to show you today. Yep, sticker sheets, you should be able to get them in a um, office supply store or a discount store. You should be able to get them pretty much anywhere. So there are some of our cards. Okay, let me get the sponsors because it is time for us to go. Because you didn't get to see the sponsors last week because we had such a mess around here with the paste papers everywhere that we didn't get the sponsors out last week. <laughs> So there you go. 
That's a fun little fun little project. And if any of these if any of these little bits of um, strips try to come up, just take a little straight pen, a little bit of the white glue, and just put it under there, and it'll stick right back down. Right back down. Chance is already here. Yep. Yes, he is. You ready to come up here and say hello to the world? You ready to say hi to the world? Come on. Charlie, are you going to behave or are you going to decide to cough today? Huh? I'm telling you, Chance has not lost an ounce. I don't know what has gotten into him. He has decided to become fat as a tick for some reason. Same food, same amount of food, same everything, and he is just, yeah. He's just chunked up. There he is. There's Chance. Charlie's on the floor coughing, as usual, because that's what he does. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, everyone, for being here. It is um, my favorite day of the week. I get to spend it with you guys. And uh, tomorrow, don't forget, you and Ma those of you that are in Mandala Madness, your show and share session is at 2 Eastern tomorrow. Charlie, knock it off. Go. Knock it off. Sorry, he's on the floor coughing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't we all, CB? So anyway, that is what's happening tomorrow. And um, I will be back here, same time, same place, next week. And so I will see you then. So I hope everybody has a wonderfully creative weekend. Uh, don't forget to check out how to draw a mandala with a compass. Google that and that'll take you over to that blog post if you want to know how to do that. Let's see, anything else I needed to tell you? I can't think of anything. So remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. Charlie says goodbye. He's on the floor down here. <laughs> And I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thanks for being here.